Okay, hi guys, it's Dane at Jonah Custom Guitars. Another uh, repair here. Uh, I already started this one actually. It's been uh, here and, and gone away and it's come back because it was kind of a to be continued later thing. So this is a grammar guitar. Uh, Bill of Grammar from the Grand Ole Opry. Uh, started a company, I think it was 63. 63 through 65, somewhere like that. Uh, built a little less than a thousand of these guitars and then they um, sold the company to uh, Ampeg. He wanted to do more uh, traveling and playing and he was feeling a little uh, tied down I guess from what I've read about it. I uh, don't know the man. Um, so long story short here I guess if we can encapsulate. This is not the original pick card. I found a website that pictures this exact guitar um, on it and it is, um, I'm going to take this off first. I, first, when this was first in, uh, I took the pick guard off. It had loose, the ends here were loose on both tips. Um, and apparently after they had put this pick guard on, like I said, this is not a stock pick guard because as you can see it covers the whole sound hole. There's some wear. Slipping this thing off here. There's some wear, excessive wear. Um, you know, right here on the top side of the sound. I don't know what you have to do when you're playing a guitar to, I mean, this is really deep. What you have to do to get into it that deep. But apparently that's why they decided to put a double, you know, pick guard on both sides like that. The originals looked pretty similar to the, you know, half of this. Um, you can see on the body of this guitar actually the shadow of the original where it it comes across here and then dips and comes around and then follows that outside line, comes back up from the point and comes right up close to the pickguard, or excuse me, the bridge. It comes around and then actually shadows right there you can see it just comes around here and then ties into the the white ring on the on the sound hole so the rosette so this is you know supposed to follow the rosette the white line and then back on that shadow line that like i said you can see it here in the camera pretty good uh and then just came down uh from you know up the top and then just straight down to the the tip of the the neck right here so it just flush with the edge of the neck and then just follow in that white white line. Anyway, uh, this this particular guitar, if you can see, maybe you can't see, I'm trying to read it through the camera lens, 1838. Um, so they started their numbering at 1000 when they made these. So that's 838 and they made just under a thousand of these, so it was fairly, fairly close to the end of their uh, their duration uh, before Ampeg. So it is a uh, spruce top, and then the back and sides are curly maple, and they have that uh, that blue burst going on there. Um, on the back of the neck as well, up the peg head. It's part of what I did the first time I had this guitar. The um, first time I had this guitar and I, I took the pick guard off, you can still see on the back of the pick guard it has a lot of bubblegum kind of glue. I got one spot here where I got it cleaned up pretty good. We have uh, new pick guard material right over there on that round by the cans of stuff. Just a black square, 12 inch square, 25 thousandths thick. This existing pick guard was uh, 60 thousandths, and that's that's too thick. Uh, the owner says he notices a difference in tonality, a lot a lot cleaner tonality without that massive pick guard on the thing. Um, so when when this uh, was originally put on. The glue that was on here uh, didn't, you know, I mean it came off. I had to use like a, 
a Gooby Mover kind of stuff like Gooby Gone or whatever that is. And uh, did a bit of rubbing on that to get rid of that, and that took care of it. But right out here on the tip, on this uh, base side, it, uh, it popped. They put another kind of paint or adhesive in there that actually reacted with the lacquer. And uh, it, it popped chips out of here when I pulled it off. Well, this point was already up, but uh, they used um, a separator knife and uh, basically boiled it. I was doing other repairs on this guitar that I was heating up hot glue for. And um, down here the, the peg head veneer was delaminating and uh, so I, even though that's plastic, I basically I, I put a scraper up underneath it and scraped both top and bottom and, and removed as much glue as I could. Then I put hot glue up under there and clamped it all together. I uh, had uh, been previously been stuck down on this other side uh, with some other type of cement, possibly the same type that they tried to re-glue the pick guard with. And it was, you know, coming down the side of the peg head uh, over here. Coming down the side there and then around the face, around this end of things. So you had glue, you know, overlapping and it was rough. And so I took and I, I uh, scraped with a razor, scraped it down and then sanded and buffed it back out over there and then re-glued this side. And so that's all neat and tidy now and, and uh, you don't feel any goobers of glue and it's, it's all sh back shiny. So now once I had once I had taken the glue off of this, every place I touched this guitar with with a, you know, basically a damp cloth to uh, neutralize the um, the glue remover, uh, just kind of left it cloudy. And so I went back in, starting at uh, I think about 600, and and sanded in all these areas and and then you know six, 600 through 1000 and then buffed it all up so I'd get it back to being shiny. Wasn't sure if he was going to want to put a pick card back on it. He wasn't, uh, the owner, wasn't specifically worried about this being seen. I think just because it's stage wear and uh, he was okay with that. But he wasn't very happy about this over here. So I've been drop filling uh, this area. And I'm to a point now I'm going to block sand that out. Uh, this is since I got it back. Drop, block sand this out. Then I'm going to go ahead and tape around the bridge and um, you know somewhere in here so along you know just just a place that it'll I, I don't plan on spraying over there but I gotta I'm gonna have to spray in this area because I can't keep drop filling this it's just not gonna it's not gonna be even enough to get the job done correctly so anyway gonna sand down what I've drop filled already and then take a little airless and uh, start shooting uh, layers of lacquer on that and just leave it laying flat and puddle it on there so it'll self-level burn itself back into this um, yeah so that's where we're at the other things I did there was a crack right up the middle here and uh, you know at the seam and uh, I got inside of that and pushed uh, high glue up into that crack from the inside and uh, that that took well so that's all stabilized there okay so that's the plan with this it's a bat of 64 into 65 probably grammar guitar and that's that's it for now thanks for watching I'll get you back in here when uh, other things are going on uh, if you haven't watched uh, I haven't posted any of them yet if you haven't watched any videos about the Gibson uh, neck reset We'll go over to that side of the world. I've got uh, got this neck off a uh, 1970 Gibson J50. Ta-da! And uh, did a video of that yesterday. The phase that I was taking the neck off had just a little tiny loose piece of uh, uh, you know spruce top that had flaked. Just right up at the very end, right next to the dovetail hole. So I just put some glue under it, taped it down, and I thought I'll just throw a block on it. 
So I just got back out here today, and so that's that's way past being dry. So I'll pull the block off of that. That's that's got to sit for about a week now, and let just you know it was steamed out. So all this stuff, all this stuff has to dry off, and uh, and shrink back down to its normal size. So we'll get back to this eventually as well. This uh, this product from Steamac, it's a butyl cellulose or just lacquer melt. And uh, what it does is on an old, old lacquer, it actually softens up the, uh, the lacquer in order to get a good, a good bond with the new lacquer that's going on. Now, I already dabbed some in the area that I was doing the drop fill in, but I'm going to go ahead and shoot uh, over, you know, some areas of this top so that any place that I get fresh lacquer, it will adhere and then I won't have a you know, melt in line that you would see otherwise. So I got this adjusted pretty pretty good I think. So it shouldn't be shouldn't be putting tons on here. So we're just gonna shoot a little bit. And I've uh, I've taped everything off. As you can see, this isn't really a dam. I don't plan on floating lacquer into this. I just uh, don't want any overspray getting on the side of the guitar. And uh, anywhere else, I didn't want to overspray on the neck, which is out of, out of frame, or on the bridge. So, let's see here. I'm back out a little bit, and you can see that I've, I've got tape on the, on the neck there as well as, uh, as the bridge and around the side. So, let's, let's do this. So this is just going to soften that lacquer up. Where I'll be recoding. You don't you don't want this stuff puddling. You don't want this stuff puddling because it'll you know it'll really make it obvious that you you soften. Okay, it's got a little bit of bit right there. So just making sure I have enough on here that it has a chance to actually soften this up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and catch this just in case I get any up here. I don't really plan on shooting this, but we'll see what happens. I think I'm going to go ahead and use this for the uh, for the lacquer as well. If I can get it dialed in, I want to put it on a little heavier than this. All right, before that compressor kicks back in, so uh, that's that's it. So the lacquer melt on there just to get a good good bite with the new lacquer, and then we'll get back on here and uh, shoot some lacquer on it. All right, I've shot a little bit of lacquer on this so far. Um, <coughs> it uh, started out with the, uh, the little airbrush like I shot the uh, lacquer melt with and uh, tried to thin the lacquer out. It just wasn't going through that thing. So I got my uh, old trusty out and uh, I'm just going to back out a little bit here, a little wider angle. So. Got my trusty little guy out here. Got it set really, really light as far as that goes. That the lacquer's probably thinned about 30%. And um, I've already shot around, you know, up in up and near the bridge and across here. Over those lines I was talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. I'm gonna come down into this area and, and lay it in there a little heavier. Uh, and, and I'll let it set. Uh, make them out later this evening and uh, and do do something there as well, but let's see what we got going on now. There. Some scratches up here as well, so I'm gonna put those two. You got to figure with uh, with the whole top exposed like this. I'm gonna have a lot of overspray, 
and I'm just going to have to sand that, block sand that back out. Sorry about that compressor. You can see I've got that lacquer laying and they're pretty heavy. And uh, as that dries, it's gonna it's gonna sink in. I'm gonna get a little heavier up in this area. So that'll that'll like I said that'll float in there and, and seek its own level. I'm gonna need to let it dry for quite a while now. So that's all for now.